Hey there, it's Kevin, and welcome to day number six of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to 3D model a hex nut. You'll learn how to use the Polygon Sketch tool, create a midplane, use the mirror feature, and use the hole feature. Before we get started, let's make sure that our document settings has the unit set to millimeters. Then, Let's start creating our threaded hex nut with a circumscribed polygon on the top plane. As you click on the center origin and drag out, you'll notice we can type the distance and the number of sides the polygon has. We'll type in 10 millimeters for the distance and keep the number of sides set to six. Now to exit the polygon sketch feature, we'll click on the vertical or horizontal line making sure that our hex nut snaps into place with the same orientation of our X and Y axes. We'll create the thickness of the hex nut by using the extrude feature. If you remember from the previous lessons, we can either go to create and select extrude, or we can hit the keyboard shortcut letter E. We'll drag the arrow up until we get to 10 millimeters, and we'll hit enter to escape the extrude command. Now we want to create the chamfered edges of the hex nut. In many cases, we could simply use the chamfer command, but it won't work with this hex nut because we want the chamfer to follow this inner circular shape. Fortunately, like anything in Fusion 360, there are always workarounds to achieve exactly what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and view the nut from the home position. Now, I want to create a new sketch on a plane that goes directly through the center of the hex nut. So when we use the revolve feature, we'll have a symmetrical shape. To create this plane, we'll simply create a new sketch from the XY plane of the browser by right clicking and hitting create sketch. I'll view the front plane of the object and call the line command with the keyboard shortcut letter L. Now I'll create a horizontal line and a vertical line, both with dimensions of 1.5 millimeters. We'll connect them together, making a triangle shape. Then, using the revolve feature, we can rotate this chamfered shape around and cut it out at the same time. After clicking the revolve feature, I'll make sure to select the profile or this triangle shape we just created, and I'll select the center axis. Lastly, we'll want to make sure that we have cut selected as the operation, ensuring that we are cutting away from the shape and not adding to it. If we click the home position and take a look at what we just completed, we'll notice that the chamfered edges follows or revolved around the circular shape. Now most hex nuts are symmetrical, so I want the chamfered edges that we just created to also be on the bottom of the hex nut. To do this, we'll use the mirror feature, but first we need to create a center plane that we'll reference. To create a center plane, also called a midplane, select midplane from the construct dropdown menu. Then all we have to do is select the top and the bottom surfaces. Now if we exit the midplane command, we can call the mirror feature from the create dropdown menu. Looking at the mirror dialog box, you'll see that we have a few different options to mirror. For this specific scenario, we want to mirror the revolve feature that we just completed. So we'll select feature as the pattern type. Then we'll go ahead and select our object by clicking on the revolve in our timeline. Lastly, we'll select the midplane that we just created as our mirror plane and click OK to see the results. Now that we're done with this midplane, we can hide it by right clicking on it and clicking the show hide light bulb, or as an alternative, we can always use the keyboard shortcut letter V. Now the last thing we need to do to finish off our threaded hex nut is create the threaded hole. We could do this by creating a circular sketch, creating an extruded cut, and then creating a new thread but a much faster option would be to use the hole feature. You'll find the hole feature under the create dropdown menu or by calling it with the keyboard shortcut letter H. After activating the hole command, we'll want to click directly on our center origin. 
Now we'll see in the whole dialog box, we have many different options that we can edit, allowing us to create the perfect threaded hole for our needs. For the purpose of the hex nut, we'll select countersink as the hole type, giving us these chamfered or countersunk edges. We'll select tapped as the hole tap type, which will create the thread in our hole. We'll select full as the thread offset because we want the thread to be the whole entire length of our hole. And we'll use this arrow to drag this down 10 millimeters. And we'll leave the drill point on flat. Now the length here we have already created by dragging the arrow down. So we'll use 12 millimeters as the width and we'll leave it at 90 degrees. The last few options here come in handy if you're 3D modeling a thread or hole specific to some sort of international standard. For this example, I'm just going to use GB metric profile, 12 millimeters as the size, M12 times one as the designation, and the last two options we can leave at their default. Now, last but not least, we have the most important step of this dialog box. In its current state, the threaded hole we've created thus far is just a graphical image. We have to select modeled here to make sure the thread is actually 3D modeled. If we were to leave this unchecked, the thread would simply be a visual representation of a thread, and it would not show up if we went to 3D print this or export this to another program. Now taking a look at this hex nut, if we're not happy with the chamfered edges here and we want them to go a little bit further, we can go back to our original sketch, double click on it in the timeline, and we can change both of these dimensions to two millimeters. Then if we stop the sketch, you'll see that our hex nut has a little bit more of a chamfer here. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button below if you learned something in this video and click subscribe to be notified of the next video where I'll show you how to 3D model a bike handle grip with embossed letters.